Hey traders, Jason here from Love It Brothers. So in this video, I'm gonna just take a quick run through the indexes. No indicators, no breath stuff, no internals. Just a quick run through the in, through the indexes, the S&P, the Dow, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100, mid caps, small caps, just to get a general sense of what's going on, okay? Market bottom last October, year ago, did very, very well off, off the low, did well January through July of, of this year. August and September were very weak. Now we're into October. A lot of people are predicting the market's gonna go up, seasonality stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Let's take a deep breath and let's just look at the index and see exactly what they're doing right now. All right, here is the SP 500, okay? You can see it moved up off the low in October here, kind of choppy trading through the beginning part of the year. We had a resistance level over here, not a clean one, but pretty good. You can see it ran up, got some support from its 21. Big drop in August, tried to rally end of August, and now, uh, and now, and so what I view here is I see, I see this as kind of a topping pattern like this, and then I, and I see this as a, like a, right now a consolidation pattern within a newly forming downtrend. Okay, if I delete those, I was holding out for like maybe there, there was a chance that like this would become some sort of like falling wedge within an uptrend, but that wedge is being uh, negated. I try to draw a lot of different trend lines to give the benefit of the doubt to the bulls. And, and I keep coming back to just the fact that we have this topping pattern that lasted several months. And now whatever you want to call this, some sort of bear flag within a newly formed downtrend with some open space below. So to me, down the you know the trend is down until proven otherwise you got all these moving averages that are moving down the space between the moving averages is increasing which means the downtrend is accelerating um, this is what's going on don't read what isn't there all right next up here's the nasdaq it's doing a little bit better um, but still not great i can draw the same type of wedge pattern here like this and say maybe that's a Maybe that's a falling wedge within an uptrend. It's possible, um, but I'm also just looking at the fact that you know we had a big breakdown over here. You can see the gap volume gigantic, and then we've had you know since then we've had sideways motion, uh, mostly mostly bull uh, that's not what I wanted. Mostly below you know a big block of trading here. So this is kind of how this is more of how I view it. Okay. The index did well, you know, over the summer, it kind of broke out there, wrote its 21 up, traded sideways in a range for a couple months, has broken down with like a, a breakaway gap and is now in consolidation mode. And it, it doesn't, it, I mean, even if the market were to move up right now, it is, there's so much damage done and so much overhead supply, it's not gonna just go straight up. It would take months to consolidate and build a base and regain its strength and energy in order to, you know, to, to lead into some sort of a, an uptrend or rally. Uh, right now, path of least resistance is down. The market is topping and breaking down uh, per the index chart so far. Here's the Dow. Okay, broke down here. You can see, <clears throat> you know, kind of hump here, hump here, hump here, break support, and is just free falling. We had this block over here. I don't remember. It was like 13 or so straight days in a row up, <clears throat> but that's all long gone. Broke support a couple weeks ago and it's just like down, down, down pretty much day after day after day. And, you know, right now the index is unchanged going back to last November. So other than, so all the gains, other than just the initial move off the low, everything else is just netted out to be nothing. Okay. And that's what it, that's what the market is. It's not you know, it, you know, overall, you can say this is just neutral, but in the near term, given lower highs, lower lows, straight down motion, um, you know, this leans bearish. Here are the mid caps, just a big, fat, sloppy mess. Virtually no gain over the last, you know, no movement, no net movement over the last 11 months. It's moved up, it's moved down, it's consolidated a few times, but there's certainly nothing in this chart that would suggest the market is doing well or healthy. All the moving averages are down. The gap between the moving averages is growing. Uh, there's nothing to suggest that the market is firming or basing or healthy or, you know, capable of moving up for more than just a bounce within what has become a downtrend. 
Small caps, same thing. Small caps are even a little bit worse. Okay, there's no clean support down here because you got a lot of you know long tails on these candles here. Okay, okay. But overall, again, we got unchanged prices since like middle of you know October last year. We got some moves up, we got some moves down, but there is absolutely nothing here that would suggest the market is basing, gaining strength, restoring strength, firming up. Any, any of that stuff, okay? Could the market, you know, go do one of these? Uh, could the market do do one of these and just suddenly move up because it's gone down so much? Sure, it could do that. Uh, but unless, until it bases, until it does something like this for, you know, four, six, eight weeks and really builds a base, it's not going to be able to sustain anything to the upside. So trend is down in the near term, in the intermediate term. Long term, you could argue that it's just a neutral market, but over, but you know, we don't trade like the long term. Um, you can't you can't say I'm going to go long because the 10 year chart looks good. You have to you have to trade like the the six month chart. And the six month chart in this case certainly leans down. Next up, uh, Nasdaq 100. So this is would be like your highest quality, uh, most of your highest quality stocks. We've heard about the disproportional gains from uh, you know the top seven or eight stocks like Apple and. Google and Amazon and such. So obviously they, those are the ones that dominate here. So certainly this one compared to the others is holding up the best. Um, you could uh, you could draw trend lines in many different ways here and argue that this is a you know a, a falling wedge within an uptrend. That's fine. I get it. But I'm still I'm still looking at this as a you know we had a block of trading here and now we have a consolidation pattern here. Could it move up here? Sure. But so much damage done elsewhere that if this thing moves up, I think best case scenario is it just kind of chops around uh, and it could easily break down for you. Not predicting it. I'm just saying, you know, see what is there. Don't see what you want to see. Don't see what, you know, your biases lead you to believe. Um, but right now, this seems to be more so in, in the process of topping and moving down rather than basing and consolidating and restoring energy for a move up. All right, so a couple things here. Now, there's a lot of quant studies out there, especially on Twitter. I'm not shooting the messenger here. Quants, they just they crunch numbers and they give us uh, and they and they post interesting facts. Um, the one most popular one that I'm seeing right now is the following. Um, a lot of the quants are saying when the S&P 500 posts a year-to-date gain that is greater than 10% at the end of July, and then is down during August and September, the market is undefeated in Q4. Okay, and that's what happened this year. The market did extremely well January through July, August and September were weak. Under this scenario, the market should post a gain in Q4. I've seen variations of this where they talk about whether the market was down in August and September or the combination of August and September, uh, whether the gain at the beginning, you know, the first seven months of the year was 15% or 10%. A lot of quants have like, you know, sliced and diced the numbers, but they all come to the same conclusion that when this scenario plays out, the market is undefeated the last three months of the year. Um, and it, it has me thinking that, like, I, I know it's undefeated. I get what that means. Um, but is it possible for everyone to be thinking the same thing and for that scenario to actually play out? Because it usually just doesn't happen. Uh, it's it's rare it's rare for everyone to get on board with something and believe something is going to happen. And then it does happen because most of the time, you know, if, if you believe something is going to happen, chances are you've already taken a position and then there's like no more, there's no more, uh, there's no, nobody left to buy, uh, to keep it going. So anyways, it's just one of the, this is like the most popular thing I've seen. I've seen it from a lot of different quants and it just kind of has me wondering, like, is it possible that this plays out given that everyone seems to be thinking it's going to happen? Another thing um, so just a comment here, if the reason you're bullish is because the market is down a lot and you don't think it can go lower, that's not a reason to be bullish. Why? Because the S&P is not even down 10%, okay? As bad as things have been, okay? And they're not that bad on the index level, but they're really bad beneath the surface. There's a lot of stocks that are down a huge, huge, huge amount. They topped months and months ago. They've been trending down for many months. They've posted huge losses, uh, if you think the market can't go down much more because it's already down a lot, think again because the the S and P is not even down ten percent off its high from late July. So here's the monthly. 
S and P chart. Um, you know, support, this goes back 2000, late 2003, it's 20 year chart. So support from the 50, support from the 50, a little bit sloppy support from the 50 there at, uh, at COVID support there. When you look at the, this long chart, I mean, this is a big run. This is a big run from 700 in 2009, all the way up to 4,800. That's a huge run. Why can't the S and P fall back to its monthly 50 or why can't it fall back to its previous low. And who's to say that this doesn't just trade sideways in a range for a couple more years? Like there's no guarantee it's going to just consolidate and break out to the uptrend or to the upside. Okay. It could very easily test the 50, 50 month moving average. It could very easily test the lows from last year. It could very easily just move in a range for another couple of years. You know, don't assume that the market has to resolve to the upside. Okay. Just food for thought. Keep it in mind right now, trend is down. Indexes don't look, some of the indexes are in bad shape and some of the indexes are just, they seem to be just in the beginning process of topping and starting to fall, which means there could be a lot more downside to go, especially when you consider how so many people are thinking it's a slam dunk. The market's going to do great in Q4. Elections coming up. They're not going to let the market fall. You never know. Okay. You never know. All right. See you next time.